I can tell you one other little anecdote of uh, invasion of your privacy. <laughs> and this one, this is actually it's quite funny. So Warren was really unhappy with the fact that we that we played seller on one rig. He just he he just was very incensed by that. <laughs> and so while they were on tour for seller, Warren and his roadie would go into music stores all across the nation and they would audition Marshall rigs. And so Warren started purchasing and then they'd ship them back and we'd put it in the warehouse and um, from the whole tour. So when everything was done, he had like 25 heads and 20 or 25 four by four cabinets in the warehouse because he was he was just by god i'm gonna we've made the money we've done what we had to do i've sacrificed what i needed to sacrifice and by god i'm gonna get the sound that i want to get i went okay great so when we went to set up to do invasion warren said i want two whole days of studio time just me myself and my roadie so that i can get my sound because remember, we have now 25 heads, 25 or 30 different cabinets. His idea was that come hell or high water, he was going to check every head with every cabinet and come up with this impossibly monstrous and unique sound. And so I said, okay, sure. You know, you're a multi-platinum recording artist. If you want to waste two days of time, okay, let's do it. So his, and I, and I have a picture of this somewhere. It was really spectacular. So we were recording his guitar parts at Rumbo and there was one ISO room that was pretty big. And so I told the I said, okay, set it up. So he set him up for piled on high or three piled on high, I guess, and five or six across Marshall cabinets. And then over in the corner, he had these 25 heads or however many it is all piled up on top of each other and had, and everything was wired. And so I, I said, okay, Warren, great. So go for it and let me know what, you, what you've decided for your rig. And so he goes in, closes the door, and he's in the room with the amps right now and turns everything on 10, goes in there and starts wailing away. And and, he, and he's playing, 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 and then he stops and you can hear that, and, you know, they're changing jacks and his roadie's in there with him. And then he goes and he plays and plays and plays and plays, plays. And I'm in the control room, which is, you know, I'm like two glass protection areas away from him. And I can't even hear myself think anymore. It's so loud. And so... He comes in and, and about after about I'll, I'll say twenty minutes, thirty minutes of this, he walks in and he says, and he said something to the effect of, "Well, I can't really tell." And of course, <laughs> you know, he was totally deaf at that point. And so what, what we we wound up doing was I got his roadie to take the rig that we used on seller, and I just said, "Stick it in the mix in the." in the pile of amps and so he he gave me the look and i said this has just got to be between us just i want you to put the head replace one of his with the old one and do this again and so we went through this routine so he went out and bought 25 amps and then we wound up using the rig from the first amp which he hated now all of a sudden he liked it and so we used that for, for him on uh on invasion and i don't think to this day he he knows that that we that we did a switcheroo on him but you know i mean sometimes it's it's just you know especially with those guys i just kind of had to you know let them think that whatever it was it was their idea right. and i was like yeah that's great okay right. so it was a little psychology 101 sometimes with those guys a role of a producer right yeah, yeah. hurting the cats you have to you have to know how to do that 